Guitar and Excel, spreadsheet creation, mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment, part number four. Get ready, because it's time for our guitar skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting with a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, there's four tabs currently down below. An example tab, two starting point tabs, a blank tab. The example tab is the finished product, the end work, in essence, the answer key. The starting point tabs will give those various starting points as we work through this long practice problem, which will correlate to the video presentations. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet, and now we're continuing at this point in time. Let's give a quick recap of what we have done thus far and then what we're planning to do from here. We started out by mapping out our musical alphabet in letters, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and then there's no sharp to the F, F sharp, G, and then G sharp, and then back to A, and then we repeated it two times. We assigned a number to it because we noted that it's kind of hard to sing the musical alphabet with the sharps and flats and whatnot in there and be able to say it forwards and backwards. And if you number them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, much easier to go up and back. Therefore, we are recommending that it might be something that you want to memorize, highly recommending to do that. Then we combine them together so we can see them as one here, seeing both the number and the letter representing the actual notes, remembering that these numbers are not representing the numbers in a scale they are representing the absolute numbers, the numbers that don't change. A C is the fourth note in the musical alphabet if you start counting from A being one. Okay, so then we used, we also created our fretboard starting with the concept that, that using our numbers first and just noting that a fretboard is designed with an E, A, D, G, B, E setup putting the related notes, mapping out the fretboard, so it maps out two times over, so we are repeating the fretboard out to 24, so it repeats two times over, the black areas are the repeated areas, and then we used the fancy X lookup tool to then create this information and pull in the letters and the numbers. So now we've got this great fretboard that is mapped out that we can use to basically uh, start to, to analyze whatever it is we want to do on the guitar. And so now we're going to go over here and continue. Let's go to the example tab to see what's next. So we've created this and now what we want to do is make this table and that's going to help us to make this nice little chart which will then show us the, the uh, scale that we're working in and it will show us the related chords that we can work with as well as the intervals and we'll do it both in numbers as well as numbers and letters and these then will be right next to our fretboards so that if i wanted to hide some cells for example going from here to here and right click and hide those cells they're going to be side by side and i can see this right next to the fretboard and it's really useful to work like that. So I'm going to right click and unhide. Let's go back to the blank tab and get it, get into it. All right. So I'm going to be over on the left hand side. I'm going to make a skinny AD. I'm just going to make a skinny AD here. So we don't want anything right next to, we don't like the tables next to each other. We like to have a spacer uh, column. That's just standard Excel practice. It's kind of like a picky eater that doesn't like, like the mashed potatoes squished together with the peas. In there they need to have a divider between them if not a physical one at least some space and then we're gonna say we're gonna make our table this is gonna be the number so we'll make our table up top this is gonna be the number this is gonna be the the formula let's call it the uh, formula and this will make sense once we start work once we start adding the information and this is going to be the note number i'm going to call it the note number and this is going to be the note 
number number and letter. I'm just going to put L for letter. And then this is going to be the distance or interval interval from root. Let's call it for now. We might change that later. All right, I changed it a little bit. I'm going to change this to scale relative number. This is going to be the formula. This is going to be uh, the note number, note number, and I'll say letter, letter. And this is going to be the interval from the root. So I'm going to select these as my headers then. I'm going to go to the Home tab, and we will go to the font. Let's make it black and white as we normally do with the headers. Alignment. Let's wrap the text this time. And then I'm going to alignment and center it. Now, when I wrap the text, it makes this cell quite large and it kind of messes everything up to the left. But that's usually not too big of a problem when you're in a header, when you're in the header cell. So I don't think it's going to bother us too much at this time. Now, if it does become problematic, some workarounds of that is we can come up, we can come up with abbreviations of our headers so they don't have to be so long or we can cut the header up and put the scale here and then the and the relative number down below it so it takes up two cells which will still look like one cell once we highlight it and so we so we'll look into possibly those possibilities if it becomes a problem later but for now we'll keep this and we're going to say all right so the scale relative number the reason i want to say relative number is because we're and let's make this i can make this as small as i can to have it three size high. So is because it's going to be different than the number that's absolute. This is an absolute one is an A if we're seeing it as an A. The relative number means what's the number of the scale that we're working in. So, so I'm going to call it, this is the one, two, and it's just going to be going down to 12. So I'll just copy that down to 12 uh, da, 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 right there. Okay, and then the formula, and let's look at it this way first. I'm going to put the note number here. The note number is going to be, let's start with a four, which is C. And C is the easiest uh, uh, to work in because there's no sharps and flats. Uh, so, and also if you're, the, the guitar is kind of tuned to work quite well in the key of C and it's relative minor A and to work in the key of G and it's relative minor E, so those are some common, uh, th those are some common scales to start practicing in, and they also line up. C, of course, lines up quite well to a piano. People that are starting to play the piano and whatnot. So I'm going to make this as small as we can to still fit there, and then, so then we're going to say, all right, let's then also just show the the related letter and number. So what I want to do is use my X lookup tool here to say if that's a number four, I want to pick up the, the 4C from this table. So we'll use our nice X lookup tool again equals X lookup tab. And we have the lookup value. I want to look up that number four comma the lookup array. I want to look it up in these numbers because I want that four right there. So I'm had control shift down, selects the entire thing and then comma and then the return array. I want you to give me this one with both of them in there. That's what I want you to give you and it'll come up with that C4 or 4C. Control shift down will select the entire thing. If you hold control backspace, it'll take you back up to the top and that's what we want. So we can close that up. And so there's the C4, okay? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna wanna be able to copy that down. So if I double click on it, this cell right here, I want that cell to be able to move. Therefore, I don't need any absolutes or mixed references, no dollar signs here. But there, I want these two arrays to stay the same. So everything in here, I'm gonna say F4, putting a dollar sign before the A's and the two, making it absolute. Same here, I'll put my cursor in here, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the A's and the number. Here, F4, dollar sign before the letters and numbers. And here, dollar sign before the letters and numbers. I should be able to copy this down. So next, what I would like to do is put the interval. When we think about a major scale, the interval of the major scale is what we think of as 
uh, the holes and half steps. Now, when I think of intervals, a whole step is two notes. So two notes, whole step, whole step, half step, one note, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's the formula for a major, a major scale. So what does a major scale mean? Whatever note we're starting on, we're applying these distances. We're going from that n note, a whole step up, which is defined as two notes up. That's what a whole step is. And then two notes up from there, and then a half step, which is just one note up, a whole step, a whole step, a whole step, and then a half step. So you kind of memorize that formula that you just have to memorize it, right? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, if you remember it in numbers, it would be two notes, two notes, one note, two note, two note, two note, one note. Remember that the whole, whole, half stuff too doesn't have anything to do with the sharps and flats because the sharps and flats really have nothing, there's nothing special about a sharp or a flat. It's not any different than any other note. I think from a music theory standpoint, it looks to me like what happened is music developed around kind of like the C scale. And that's why the C to G is all in uh, the, the musical alphabet. And then when you started to, to widen that perspective that has now been lettered to add the other notes, you had to use these sharps and flats that came into play, which makes it seem like the sharps and flats are something different than the other notes, but they're not because they're just, they're just if you start from a different point, then you'll be using the sharps and flats. Now the guitar and the piano are tuned so that they work better. And I mean, you know, they work differently in different notes. So obviously uh, a, a piano, if you just play all the white notes, it sounds good in and of itself because that's in the key of C. But if you want to play in any other key, it gets a little bit more complicated because you have to change the pattern. Uh, with the guitar, the open strings become quite useful. So, so if you want to play in open position, then it lends itself to playing certain keys. But in theory, there's no difference really between the sharps and flats. So anyways, here's, there's our formula. So then I can say what I'm going to do is take the four plus two. So this is our running balance. This is like a running balance for, for accounting. And then I can just put my cursor here and copy that down. So now I'm just taking the last one plus the interval. The last one plus the interval gives us our running balance. We had four, we added two, now we're at six. Then we added two, we're at eight. We added one, we're at nine. We added two, we're at 11. But there's a problem because I shouldn't be able to go past 13. And notice if I copy this down, we'll get the right numbers here until we get to here and then we get an error. An error. So if we go from four to six, we got four, five, six, or C, uh, C sharp to D, right? Because there's a C sharp here, right? We'd, we'd, we'd be at C, C sharp, and then D, two notes. And then I go from uh, two notes up to eight. So we, we've got six, seven, eight, eight's an E, or D, two notes up, D sharp, and then E, right? So here's a D, and then D sharp, and then an E. And then I only go one note up from there, but note that when I go from E, there's no, there's no sharp after E. That's where it's weird. That's where on the piano, you don't have the black note in between, and you just have to know that. But if you just number them, then it's not an issue, right? Because you're just going to say, that's yeah, from eight to nine, and, and it's just one note, right? It's just one note if you just count it from one to 12. And so that sharp and flat thing isn't really an issue if you just number the notes, because then that's why it can be easier sometimes. And then it goes to 11, two steps, so 9, 10, 11, which is a G. Uh, but if you if you count it this way, 9 is an F, and then uh, F sharp, and then the G. But then it goes to 13, and we can't do that. So I have to do a more fancy formula. So let's say, okay, how can I do a formula so, I, so this will all work out like good? And I don't have to do, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this. And I'm going to do this again using our logic function equals if brackets. I'm going to say if this cell plus that cell, and let's put some brackets around that just to make sure it takes that whole thing. If that whole thing brackets around it is, uh, if that whole thing is less than 13, we're taking 13 this time because this is going to add up to if it's something over, if it's 12, it's okay, because then it would be a G sharp. But if it's 13, 
then it's no good. We can't do that. So if it's less than 13, what do we want you to do? Comma. If that's true, then I just want you to take this plus this. Just do what you would normally do. But if it's not true, what do we want you to do? I want you to take this plus this, and then it would be over 13. If it's over 13, I have to subtract out 12 because 12 is the number of, of notes in here. So I'm going to take that plus that. I mean, if it came out to 13, you'd subtract 12 and it would get you down to 1 or A, right? So minus, minus 12. And then I'm going to say, okay, so there it is. Boom. So it still gives us the 6 here, but when I take it down to, to here, copying it down, see, see, then it takes me, so then I'm okay right here, right? It didn't take me above 12. It took me back to 1 or A. So there's our there's where the fanciness uh, happens. Fanciness has happened right before our eyes with Excel. It's helped us greatly. Oh, by the way, so now I did now I, I messed up this though. This is uh, whole whole half whole 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 half, and then this is gonna repeat itself again. So so I can then say okay. And let's take it down. I think we should. We only really need to take it down to like 16. And because note that we we start at C, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes in a scale. And then it goes back to the one, uh, which is which is going to go back to the C. So if I number, you can see this note as either a one or an eight if you were going to continue up an octave, right? So I can see this as it's going from the one in the scale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one, or I could say it's going up to the next octave and I might name it the eighth and the ninth and you know, or eight, nine, 10, you could kind of continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on numbering it up this way to 16. So let's number it up to 16. And then I will copy my intervals by saying the intervals are going to then repeat. We're back at one, uh, which is an, represented by an eight. And then I'm going to say that this equals the two above. And then when I copy that relative cell down, it'll copy the, the same pattern and the pattern will repeat itself. So nice little trick, little Excel trick. And then I can copy these down and everything should work uh, very nicely. So I'll copy this down. And so there's our formula. So now we've got, we start at C, which is, is the four, up two notes to a six, which is a D, up two notes to an eight, which is an E, up one note to a nine, which is an F, up two notes, 11, which is a, a G, up uh, two notes, 11, 12, and then back to one, which is an A, and then again, now we go to two notes up, which is going to uh, a, a three, and then we go uh, one note up, which is going to a four or a C, and then two notes up to a six or a D, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then it's sometimes it might be useful to see how far away uh, something is from the root note. So this is the interval from note to note, right? From each note to note. But sometimes it might be useful to say, well, if that's the one note, if that's my root, how far away, what's the interval from the root? So obviously the first one is going to be just zero because it's, 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 is the root. The next one I can say, well, the, the distance from the note to the root is this six minus the four. So notice how the numbers are useful here. Then, then the next one would be eight minus four. But once again, we're gonna run into a problem when we do this because we're gonna end up uh, going over, uh, like, like what if this is a one? Is the, the interval wouldn't really make sense if it was one minus four is gonna give us like a negative number. So it's like, okay, how can I do a logical function to try to give us each of these notes distance from that root note? So let's try to do a fancy formula like that. So I'm going to say, all right, on the second one, I'm going to say, 
logic test if, so equals if brackets, here's our if then function again or formula. We're gonna say if this minus this, and let's put brackets around it just to make sure it's that minus that. If that thing is uh, greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, so it's a positive number, what do we want you to do then, comma, we just want you to take this minus that. But, comma, if it becomes less than zero, what do we want you to do? We want you to take this minus that still, but it will be a negative number, and to get it back to where it should be, we're gonna say plus 12 because there's 12 notes, and that should get us back to where we want to be. So I'm gonna say, there it is, boom. Now to copy that down, however, there's some of these cells I don't wanna move down because I wanna compare everything to this note right here. So the four, which is in AG, uh, AG2, this one needs to be absolute. I want the six to move down, but not the four. So everything that has an AG2, I'm gonna make absolute by selecting F4, dollar sign before the letter and number. So here's another AG2, putting my cursor there, F4, dollar sign before the letter and number. Here's another one, uh, AG2, F4, dollar sign before the letter and number and enter. Now, if I put my fill hander here and copy it down, you can see the intervals look like they're doing what we would expect. So this would be six minus four, this is eight minus four, this is nine minus four, this is 11 uh, minus four, and this here's where the key is to see if it works with this negative number, because this would be one minus four, but no, it's a, it becomes a nine, not a, a negative three, because uh, the, di the distance between the two, if we go like around uh, the horn, is going to be nine, not negative three. In other words, for example, if you counted up from four, you'd say four, if I count on my fingers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then it goes back to one, which is the nine one if you count that out on your fingers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then back to one. So nine, it looks correct. So then I can copy that down and say, all right, I think that's, I think that's right. And so I'm gonna copy that all the way down here and it gets a little bit tricky when we get above you know above here because you can kind of think of this as another octave up or i can think of it as a repeat of that d so if it was another octave up you might think it's like 12 plus 2 because it's that's the distance but i'm just going to keep it i'm not going to do that i'm just going to keep it at this distance here which means the distance between the closest d and the closest C. You could you could get fancy and try to do something uh, different with that, but I'm gonna keep it where we're at. So then I'm gonna select all of this stuff. I'm gonna make it my normal formatting, home tab, font group. We'll hit the bucket drop down. I'm gonna make it blue and bordered, and it's about as thin. I'm gonna make this a little bit thinner, as thin as I can without making it uh, wrap. So there we have it. All right, so next time, we're gonna take this information and we'll use it to create then this bit, uh, which will give us which will give us that and we'll see this one as well, giving us the letter and the number of whatever uh, key that we're in. Notice if I go back to the blank tab that we can change the key. We might wanna make this one green, home tab, font group, I'll make that one green because that's kind of the key to switching everything up. So if I wanted to switch this entire thing to any other major uh, scale, all I have to do is change this. If, it, if I change it for, to an A, that'd be a one. Everything else will change automatically and this formula will change automatically. If I want to change it to a D, that would be a six. And then everything else will change automatically because the formula, the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half formula is based off whatever root we put into it. So we're gonna keep it at four, which is a C, because the Cs don't have those sharps and flats, and that's usually the first you know, scale that people get familiar with. So we'll keep at the familiar scale, but you can obviously, that's the key to flipping it to uh, different scales and then experimenting with them.